How's it going guys? It's Poetry Sut and welcome to a guide about how to form Prussia as Brandenburg. So Prussia is one of those nations in EU4 that is considered to be one of the top nations in terms of just power and quality of troops and I, I would definitely agree with that. Lots of people make jokes saying that uh, you can make Prussian space marines and it's pretty much pretty much true uh, in the in the sense of the word in that you know you have really really powerful units. So um, today I'm going to be telling you guys how to use Brandenburg to form it and the reason I'm not doing one of the other ones that can form it, I believe the, the Teutons can and possibly Pomerania, I'm not sure. The reason I'm going to talk about Brandenburg is because I have actually used Brandenburg recently to form Prussia and I know, so I have the most experience with that and I'm going to be telling you guys the way I did it and it worked very well and I believe it worked better than average compared to some other stuff I've seen on the Paradox Plaza subreddit. So, I, I don't know. I think my way worked pretty well. If you found a different way that works better, that's fine. Tell me in the comments, actually. I would love to, to hear about it. But anyways, um, so we're going to we'll go ahead and start up here as Brandenburg. Uh, we, don't, we don't really need any of that. I'm not going to be playing this. Um, and if I remember, I'll include some screenshots of my Prussia game. Uh, at this point, I own all of like the southern Baltic edge, all of Denmark, a uh, bunch of uh, stuff in northern Germany. I own all of... Poland and a large chunk of Lithuania all the way down to Genoa who I vassalized in this area so that I could feed them part of Italy and then just jump over to Italy. I just kind of wanted to do some goofy stuff uh, and I have alliances with Austria who has become super Austria and uh, I believe with Russia as well who is in Muscovy and Novgorod and a bunch of parts of Kazan and Golden Horde. So I have a lot of strong allies and I'm pretty strong myself. So anyways, so how do you how do you do it? How do you how do you form Prussia? Well, first of all, I guess we should go ahead and look at this. Form the Kingdom of Prussia. What do we need to have? Admin Tech 10, which is standard for forming nations. You have to be either Protestant or Reformed, which is just something important to note. You have to own Konigsberg, Konigsberg, gosh darn it, I cannot talk. Konigsberg, right here, next to Memel and Ermland. Uh, it's a very good province. 17 developments, pretty good. And uh, you have to have uh, either Danzig or Stolp. Danzig is here, Stolp is right next to it. So you have to expand into this direction if you're starting as Brandenburg, which I do, I honestly do think that Brandenburg is probably one of the, the maybe the best nation to start as. Um, so yeah, so your starting step should be to try to establish some good alliances. Obviously you're going to be doing conquest here, but be before you do that, what you want to do is you want to establish yourself with some allies in the area. Some really good ones are Austria, if you can manage it, uh, Poland or Lithuania or even like Sweden if they break free early on uh, Those are probably going to be your best bets in my game I was lucky and I got Austria to, to do it to, to give me an alliance and like let's say that we do this We can already get a royal marriage with them Same with these guys we can give them a royal marriage so I, I'm, I'm not going to really play this but uh, But you can see it's fairly simple to get these alliances in the early game because you have some common enemies um, what you want to do with rivals, you definitely want to set the Teutonic Order as your rivals because they're right here. You're going to need to attack them anyways. You want to also set Pomerania as a rival, definitely. Um, beyond that, you do need a third one actually because you have so many available. Uh, you don't want to pick Poland. You want to try to friend Poland if, if possible. It's a good idea to actually, with like your other rival slot, maybe choose Mecklenburg or someone up here because you want to actually expand into here. And the reason why is because one of the hard parts about the early game is money. And if you can, you know, you start with your uh, capital in Berlin and a lot of trade power in Lübeck, but uh, a lot of potential for trade power, I should say. But you don't actually start with that much, and you want to move into the Lubeck node and capitalize on that being one of the best nodes in the game, in my opinion at least. It is a very strong node. It can get a lot of trade power and a lot of trade value. So you should work on that. That's one reason why you want to move towards the coast as one of your first actions. So yeah, so after you get your allies in place, hopefully Poland and Austria, because those are like probably the, the two standard ones I would say that are the best right off the bat. Uh, so after you do that, then what do you do? Well, as a first step, you want to try to get this mission right here, Reclaim Neumark. You want to take Neumark from the Teutons, uh, and if if possible, take some other stuff. But in order to really do that, you'd have to take some of Pomerania's land first. And it might be a little hard because they might, yeah, they, they normally ally like the Livonian Order, or uh, maybe even Denmark if they're lucky enough. 
So you could have a tough time with that. However, if you get enough alliance offers from Austria and Poland and stuff, you can normally get those guys to join your wars. So after you kind of establish yourself up here, obviously I'll, I'll try to show some screenshots if, I've, if I have any from my Prussia game. But um, after you kind of establish yourself up here, uh, Poland is probably going to stop liking you. Because they normally get a mission fairly early on. They haven't chosen it yet. But normally they get a mission fairly early on to take all the land like up here. And that's not good, obviously, because that's what you want to take. You have to take that if you want to be able to own all this land. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's going to be a major problem. However, if you can grab all that land quick enough, Poland won't be able to. And you'll probably actually be strong enough that if they declare on you, which is actually fairly likely because they uh, estimate that they have more power than you, then Austria will join. Austria is the emperor, and because they protect you, because they're the emperor, they actually bring in all their allies, and normally you can beat up Poland in this uh, manner. So try not to declare on Poland. Try to, you know, entice them into declaring on you, and uh, make sure you have Austria liking you. <laughs> That's the other thing. Um, so beyond this, another strategy you can actually do is try to get the support of electors and become the emperor, because that's a major help. It's a diplomatic boost. It also means you can't get unlawful territory, which is a major help. Uh, being in the empire, it's a problem. Neumark is free, but then beyond that, you have to take imperial lands. So that's a problem. If you can get people to vote you, for you, though, you can uh, get around that. And it's actually not too hard. You start in a very good position, because you're a la large enough nation in the empire. And uh, same culture group. All that stuff really adds up to make it uh, a good deal for you. So one of the hardest things, I think, and this is probably like one of the last major points of this little guide, uh, one of the hardest things is the Protestant Reformation, getting that. If you do become emperor, you are not going to keep on to it for very long. You can be good in the early game. But when you become Protestant, you can no longer be the emperor. Uh, and so with becoming Protestant, what you want to do is you want to try to hop on it and be one of the first people to convert so you can get a center of reformation. Normally it fires uh, sometime around like 1500 I would say, maybe a little later in some cases. Sometimes even in 1490 you can even see it fire. But um, normally 1500 or a little later. And so around that time when you see this value getting up near 100%, it can fire a little below I think, but it can also fire uh, it has a much higher chance to fire after 100%. When you see the reform desire get that high you want to try to be at peace for a couple of years just so that right when you see the advent the protestant reformation uh it'll say so and so has decided to reform you know uh, when you see that event you immediately want to pause the game and convert and that'll actually lead to you getting a center of reformation that'll automatically convert not only your land but also lots of the land of your neighbors which is really good because then your neighbors will like you more and you'll be able to get more alliances in the future um, and you may say this is bad because then Austria won't like you. This is true. Austria will most likely not become Protestant, like almost definitely. Um, and they will not like you as much. But that's why you focus on raising their trust right from the start, if you can, by joining their wars. And also just by improving relations. You want to keep up your relations very high with Austria. That's one of the, uh, the most important things, I would say. Anyways, that's, that's pretty much all the major tips. Just remember, let's just do a quick recap. Uh, if you're starting as Brandenburg, what you want to do is you want to quickly secure your alliances with Poland and Austria, possibly Lithuania separately, possibly Sweden, possibly even the Livonians or Novgorod or Muscovy. You know, just kind of look at the situation, look at the diplomatic map mode, see who likes who, see who hates who. Uh, and once you do, not diplomatic map mode, opinion map mode, but um, as soon as you do that, you want to try to take Neumark back. Uh, and from there, you want to try to take some land up here along the northern German coast and then into Danzig and Konigsberg and all that land there. And if you kind of stick to this and make sure not to go over your aggressive expansion limit, it shouldn't take you that long to get in a place where you're able to form Prussia. Um, I guess the last thing I should mention is that the whole Space Marines thing pretty much comes naturally with the morale of armies plus 20%, infantry combat ability plus 20%, and uh, ma national manpower plus 25%. Um, along with if you choose quantity or quality ideas and some other ideas, you can just get m these ridiculously overpowered troops and you can get your military, uh, your army tradition up to like 50. And if you do that, your armies will just be able to tear people apart. I've seen stack wipes of 20 stacks. Uh, I have a 30 stack, go and attack a 20 stack and stack wipe them. 
uh, when they have full morale because I just tear them apart so quickly and it's really fun. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this guide. Um, I'll remember to, I'll try to remember to include screenshots, like I said. It's very fun to play as Prussia. Uh, late game can be a little difficult because everyone's kind of established, but yeah, you can figure it out beyond there, I believe, because um, you'll have enough power to, to really deal with it, you know. And uh, just just have fun with Prussia, and uh, hopefully this guide helps you. I know some people ask for it on the subreddit, so I that's how I chose to do this. So. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for more. If you find any ways that are better than this, uh, feel free to tell me. And if you want to, go check out my other series on EU4. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Whatever I Do. Goodbye.